the hundred dresses part one before you read how do we judge the people around us by their money wealth and possessions or is there something of more enduring value to look for in a person this story is a sensitive account of how a poor young girl is judged by her classmates venda petronsky is a young polish girl who goes to school with other american children in an american town these other children see wanda as different in many ways can you guess how they treat her read the information below and find out more about this community about or about a related topic from an encyclopedia or internet the polish american community in the united states the first polish immigrants arrived in america in 1608 but the largest wave of polish immigration occurred in the early 20th century when more than 1 million poles migrated to the united states the polish state did not exist at that time and the immigrants were identified according to their country of origin rather than to ethnicity they were identified as russian poles German Poles and Austrian Poles. One of the most notable Polish American communities is in Chicago and its suburbs. So Chicago is sometimes called the second largest Polish city in the world, next to only Warsaw, the capital of Poland. Polish Americans were sometimes discriminated against in the United States, as were Irish, Italians and Jews. According to the United States 2000 census, 667,414 Americans of age 5 years and older reported Polish as the language spoken at home, which is about 1.4% of the people who speak languages other than English, or a quarter percent of the US population. The story begins. Today, Monday. Wanda Petronsky was not in her seat, but nobody, not even Peggy and Madeline, the girls who started all the fun, noticed her absence. Usually, Wanda sat in the seat next to the last seat in the last row in room 13. She sat in the corner of the room where the rough boys who did not make good marks sat, the corner of the room where there was most scuffling of feet most roars of laughter when anything funny was said and most mud and dirt on the floor. Wanda did not sit there because she was rough and noisy. On the contrary, she was very quiet and rarely said anything at all. And nobody had ever heard her laugh out loud. Sometimes she twisted her mouth into a crooked sort of smile. But that was all. Nobody knew exactly why Wanda sat in that seat, unless it was because she came all the way from Boggins Heights and her feet were usually caked with dry mud. But no one really thought much about Wanda Petronsky once she sat in the corner of the room. The time when they thought about Wanda was outside the school hours. At noon time, when they were coming back to school or in the morning, early before the school began, when groups of two or three, or even more, would be talking and laughing on their way to the schoolyard. Then sometimes they waited for Wanda to have fun with her. The next day, Tuesday, Wanda was not in school either, and nobody noticed her absence again. But on Wednesday, Peggy and Maddie, who sat down front with other children, who got good marks, and who didn't track in a whole lot of mud, did notice that Wanda wasn't there. Peggy was most popular girl in the school. She was pretty. She had many pretty clothes, and her hair was curly. Mary was her closest friend. The reason Peggy and Mary noticed Wanda's absence was because Wanda had made them late to school. They had waited and waited for Wanda to have some fun with her and she just hadn't come. They often waited for Wanda Petronsky to have fun with her. 
Venda Petronsky. Most of the children in the room, 13, didn't have names like that. They had names easy to say, like Thomas, Smith or Alan. There was one boy named Bounce, Willy Bounce, and people thought that was funny, but not funny in the same way that Petronsky was. Vanda didn't have any friends. She came to school alone and went home alone. She always wore a faded blue dress that didn't hang right. It was clean, but it looked as though it had never been ironed properly. She didn't have any friends, but a lot of girls talked to her. Sometimes they surrounded her in the schoolyard as she stood watching the little girls play hopscotch on the worn hard ground. Wanda, Peggy would say in a most courteous manner as she were talking to Miss Mason. Wanda, she would say, giving one of her friends a nudge, tell us, how many dresses did you say you had hanging up in your closet? A hundred, Wanda would say. A hundred? exclaimed all the little girls incredulously, and the little ones would stop playing hopscotch and listen. Yeah, a hundred, all lined up, said Wanda. Then her thin lips drew together in silence. What are they like? All silk, I bet, said Peggy. Yeah, all silk, all colors. Velvet, too? Yeah, velvet, too. A hundred dresses, Wanda would repeat stolidly, all lined up in my closet. Then they would let her go. And before she had gone very far, they couldn't help bursting into shrieks and peals of laughter. A hundred dresses? Obviously, the only dress Wanda had was the blue one she wore every day. So why did she say she had a hundred? What a story! How many shoes t did you say you had? Sixty pairs, all lined up in my closet. Cries of exaggerated politeness greeted this, all alike. Oh no, every pair is different, all colors, all lined up. Peggy, who had thought up about this game, and Maddie, her inseparable friend, were always the last to leave. Finally, Wanda would move up the street, her eyes dull and her mouth closed, hitching her left shoulder every now and then in the funny way she had, finishing the walk to school alone. Peggy was not really cruel. She protected small children from bullies, and she cried for hours if she saw an animal mistreated. If anybody had said to her, Don't you think that is a cruel way to treat Wanda? She would have been very surprised. Cruel? Why did the girl say she had a hundred dresses? Anybody could tell that was a lie. Why did she want to lie? And she wasn't just an ordinary person. Else, why did she have a name like that? Anyway, they never made her cry. As for Maddie, this business of asking Wanda every day about how many dresses and how many hats and how many this and that she had was bothering her. Maddie was poor herself. She usually wore somebody's hand-me-down clothes. Thank goodness, she didn't live up on the Boggins Heights or have a funny name. Sometimes, when Peggy was asking Wanda those questions in that mocking, polite voice, Maddie felt embarrassed and studied the marbles in the palm of her hand, rolling them around and saying nothing herself. Not that she felt sorry for Wanda, exactly. She would never have paid any attention to Wanda if Peggy hadn't invented the dresses game. But suppose Peggy and all the others started in on her next. She wasn't as poor as Wanda, perhaps, but she was poor. Of course, she would have more sense than to say she had a hundred dresses. Still, she would not like for them to begin on her. She wished Peggy would stop teasing Wanda Petronsky. Today, even though they had been late to school, Maddie was glad. She had not had to make fun of Wanda. She worked her arithmetic problems absent-mindedly. Eight times eight, let's see. She wished she had the nerve to write Peggy a note. 
because she knew she never would have the courage to speak right out to Peggy to say, Hey Peg, let's stop asking Wanda about how many dresses she has. When she finished her arithmetic, she did start a note to Peggy. Suddenly, she paused and shuddered. She pictured herself in the schoolyard, a new target for Peggy and the girls. Peggy might ask her where she got the dress that she had on, and Maddie would have to say it was one of Peggy's old ones that Maddie's mother had tried to disguise with new trimmings so no one in room 13 would recognize it. If only Peggy would decide of her own accord to stop having fun with Wanda. Oh well. Mary ran her hand through her short blonde hair as though to push the uncomfortable thoughts away. What difference did it make? Slowly, Mary tore into bits the note she had started. She was Peggy's best friend and Peggy was the best like girl in the whole room. Peggy could not possibly do anything that was really wrong, she thought. As for Wanda, she was just some girl who lived up on the Boggan Heights and stood alone in the schoolyard. She scarcely ever said anything to anybody. The only time she talked was in the schoolyard about her hundred dresses. Maddie remembered her telling about one of her dresses, pale blue with colored trimmings. And she remembered another that was brilliant jungle green with a red chest. You would look like a Christmas tree in that, the girls had sent in pretended admiration. Thinking about Wanda and her hundred dresses all lined up in the closet, Maddie began to wonder what who was going on to win the drawing and coloring contest. For girls, this contest consisted of designing dresses and for boys of designing motorboats. Probably, Peggy would win the girls' medal. Peggy drew better than anyone else in the room. At least, that's what everybody thought. She could copy a picture in a magazine or some film star's head so that you could almost tell who it was. Oh, Maddie was sure Peggy would win. Well, tomorrow the teacher was going to announce the winners. Then they would know. The next day, it was drizzling. Maddie and Peggy hurried to school under Peggy's umbrella. Naturally, on a day like this, they didn't wait for Wanda Petronsky on the corner of Oliver Street, the street that far, far away under the railroad tracks and up the hill led to Boggins Heights. Anyway, they weren't taking chances on being late today because today was important. Do you think Miss Mason will announce the winners today? Asked Peggy. Oh, I hope so, the minute we get in, said Maddie. Of course you will win, Peg. Hope so, said Peggy eagerly. The minute they entered the classroom, they stopped short and gasped. There were drawings all over the room, on every ledge and windowsill, dazzling colors and brilliant lavish designs all drawn on great sheets of wrapping paper. There must have been a hundred of them, all lined up. These must be drawings for the contest. They were. Everybody stopped and whistled or murmured admiringly. As soon as the class had assembled, Miss Mason announced the winners. Jack Beggles had won for the boys she said, and his design for an outboard motor was on exhibition in room 12, along with the sketches by all the other boys. As for the girls, she said, although just one or two sketches were submitted by most, one girl and room 13 should be proud of her. This one girl actually drew 100 designs, all different and beautiful. In the opinion of the judges, any one of the drawings is worthy of winning the prize. I am very happy to say that Wanda Petronsky is the winner of the girls' medal. Unfortunately, Wanda had been absent from school for some days and is not here to receive the applause that is due to her. Let us hope she will be back tomorrow. Now class, you may file around the room quietly and look at her exquisite drawings. The children burst into applause 
and even the boys were glad to have a chance to stamp on the floor, put their fingers in the mouth and whistle, though they were not interested in the dresses. Look, Peg, whispered Maddie. There's that blue one she told us about. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, said Peggy, and there is that green one. Boy, and I thought I could draw.